Welcome back. So far, we've learned a few built-in functions that Python has. Few built-in actions, right? Actions that we can take on data. And we learned about str. We learned about int. We learned about float and the type conversion that we can do. We also learned about type. We also learned about print. And these built-in functions in Python, well, there's a few of them. And I'll link to this resource, but there's not too, too many. As a matter of fact, we've also seen ones like ABS or round in our numbers video. So numbers had some functions that we can use, some built-in functions. Well, strings also has a very useful one called len, which stands for length. So as you guessed it, if I type in something like this and I print this out and I click run, I get nine because it's calculating the length of the string. In our case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The length of the string is nine. Now you have to be careful here because the length itself doesn't start at zero as we've seen with indexes. Instead, it counts like humans do from one. So a neat thing to do here is I can do something like this. Let's say that we have a variable greet that equals hello. Well, I can grab the greet variable, which is a string, and use string slicing to grab, well, the first and then go all the way until the end. Now, the default already does this. If I leave it like this, it's going to grab hello. Oh, and make sure I add a bracket here. Let's click run. I get hello. Now, if I do zero to length of greet, what does that mean? Well, if I click run, I still get hello because the length of greet is nine. Like so. Now, this length function is quite useful and we're going to use it a lot in this course. But I want to introduce to you the concept of built-in functions as well as what we call built-in methods. Hmm. What does that mean? A built-in function had the syntax of the word that was highlighted in blue, and then we used curly brackets to perform some action on a data type. However, Python also has this idea of methods. And methods are similar to functions, but they, they are owned by something. So for example, in Python, we have string methods. So these are methods or actions that only strings can perform. And don't worry, this is something that we'll talk more about when we talk about classes and functions. But for now, Python, for example, has string methods. So these are methods that we can use specifically for strings. And methods have a special syntax where instead of just the word with the curly brackets, it usually has a dot in front of it. So dot and then some sort of word, and we've actually seen one, format, right? Dot format curly brackets or brackets is a method. And if I go to Python string methods and I scroll down or scroll up, we see that format, format specific values in a string is a method. Now, why do we care? Well. With this, Python gives us automatic tools that we can use on strings. So let's explore some of these string methods. Let's create a quote here. And the quote is going to be to be or not to be. Now in here with this quote, we can use some methods on this string. Now I'm not gonna go through everything because well, 60% of these you're most likely never going to use in your career. I'm going to go over the important ones that you'll see over and over again, but
but I'll also link to this so that you can see this for yourself as a reference. Remember, as a programmer, your job is not to memorize this and read a language like you read a dictionary. Instead, it is to know that this resource exists and it's for you to explore and learn as a specific problem occurs. But let's get back to the task at hand. One thing that we can do is to use the upper method. We use a dot and then type in upper and then the curly brackets. And luckily for us, our editor shows us that this actually exists because of the drop-down menu. So what happens now? If I print this and I click run, look at that, everything gets capitalized to be or not to be. There is also another one we can use called capitalize. What's the difference between the two? Well, if I run, you see that it capitalizes the beginning of the sentence. And by the way, your editor, or in our case, our REPL, if you hover over this, it'll actually tell you what it does it returns a capitalized version of S. So whatever is to the left of the dot. And a good editor will actually show you all the things available to you. So as soon as you press a dot, look at that. I see all these purple boxes, which are methods that are available to me for a string. And you see there's a lot of them. Now, don't worry about these double underscores, these dunder methods, because this is something that we'll talk about when we talk about classes. But you can see that you have different things that you can use. For example, you have lower. Instead of upper, it lower cases everything. What if I wanna use find, for example? And find simply says, hey, does B, exist in the code to be or not to be? And if I click run, well, it tells me that yes, code.find has B and it starts at index of three. So if I go to zero, one, two, and then look at that, three. So we have find, which finds us the first occurrence of a piece of text. You also have things like replace where I can replace whatever I give it as the first thing and then separate it to the second thing. So you can see over here, it tells me old and then comma new. And I can replace this with me. If I click run, I get to me or not to me. So this replaces all the occurrences of B. Now, the final thing I wanna point out to you is that if I print here, quote, what do you think is going to happen? I've printed here and I replaced to me, to be or not to be with to me or not to me. Quite a selfish quote. But if I print this again on the fifth line, what do you think will happen? Let's find out. Whoa. Is this what you expected? Think about why this might happen based on what we've learned. Here's the thing. Remember, strings are immutable. That is, they cannot be changed. We can overwrite them if we want, but we don't change them. We either create them or destroy them. In our case, when we do quote dot replace to me or not to me, it's creating a new string. Now, we're not assigning this string to anything so eventually after we print it, we remove it from memory. But if I do something like this, where I have quote two equals quote dot replace, and I print quote two, well, in our case, we're creating a whole new string. We're creating a string, but we never modify the original string because it's immutable. So that quote always stays the way it is. Until we destroy it, until we remove it, our program ends, this is going to exist. All right, 
Hope you're having fun. Hang in there. More to learn in the next video.